Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. There's various ways to uh, break the news to someone, uh, bad news I'm talking, and uh, that's, uh, it depends, the, the methods that you will employ uh, depend on the audience, depends on who is the person who's gonna be uh, receiving the bad news. And you have to uh, manufacture your, um, your technique according to the, um, the audience. So in this case, you have the public, and as we know, the public, the masses are, uh, sorry to say, not the most, overall, not a, um, as Einstein said, for 99.9% .9 of the masses of human uh, race, humankind, brain is uh, something extra. They don't need it. They need only the backbone. So that tells you that they uh, function, we function mostly on instincts and for m most of us, brain is something that we don't uh, use too much because it requires a lot of energy to think. And uh, therefore, in this case, um, the Ukrainian um, leadership and obviously the mass media who is obviously on their side still, are going to break the news to the Ukrainian people that certain things will be lost. Like uh, this uh, strategic location will be taken by the Russians soon. But you don't want to break the news too fast because of the reasons I mentioned. And uh, people are more coward than uh, courageous. That's uh, to be courageous, you have to, you know, um, develop that and um, you have to have some instincts in your inside of you. you have to have some genes as well i would say uh, then you uh you don't want to break the news to the population we're lost everything is lost right now let's go what are we going to do because there's going to be a panic and uh people will just drop everything they have and um, or maybe they will just pick up everything they have and do something else nevertheless in this case you try to go slowly uh, in this case, you want to, how should I put it, uh, sensitize, uh, the, the tenderize the, the audience. Like this is the goal where you, the bad news is going to be right here and you start from here. The first day you start here, the next day you go a little bit further and higher and then a little bit the next day, the next day, the next day and see how they react. And if they, they react in a certain way, you stop for a little bit and then you get here. And then you see it, it, they look back, it's just this transition. Instead of being from here, straight there, you got there and uh, people got used to the idea and they will take it easier, you know. They have time to... <laughs> anyway, let's go to this article here, which is from the New Voice of Ukraine, June 23rd, 2022. Invaders may seize Lishansk in coming days, offensive of... Slovyansk continues, U.S. Thinks, think tank says. So, invaders, which is Russians in this case, may seize in coming days. So they're right here right now. But the point is here. You're going to lose Lishansk. Uh, it's lost. You're done. You're losing it. That's here. So they will not jump. They, just, they use may seize in the coming days. So that's a possibility. Maybe not. And it's not right now, even though you can see the trend. It may, may be some in the future. Tomorrow or in a few days, going to be like, oh my God, uh, bad situation there, man. It seems like the Russians are really going to do it. You know, going to do this. And then you go from there. So let's see what these guys are saying. According to the ISW's information, Russia air defense system in eastern Ukraine limited the effectiveness of Ukrainian drones facing the armed forces of Ukraine to reduce their air operation to 20 to 30 sorties per day. All right, that means, guys, send us more. We need them. All right. Uh, however, Ukraine's air force has still managed to carry out several successful strikes against hostile targets in the Kherson Oblast over the past week, the ISW says. All right, then, uh, according to the ISW, I think it's uh, um, information, Russian air defense system in eastern Ukraine limit the effectiveness of Ukraine. Okay, we know already that one. So, citing Russian sources, the ISW reports that Russian troops lack the numbers and the strength to succeed in the fighting in Ukraine. Okay, if you say that, 
what are you going to say next? The Russian leadership continues to carry out coercive partial mobilization efforts that are only producing limited numbers of replacements while negatively impacting the morale and discipline of the force, forcibly mobilized personnel, the US think tank said. So they are losing, they're bad, the Russians are, uh, mor the morale is down, they use coercive tactics to keep them fighting and all that. And then again, now we go to back to this one. How is that, what they said right now, could be true if you're gonna read the next paragraph. The invaders are continuing their assaults such as Lishansk and will probably capture the city in the coming days. This negates the previous uh, uh, paragraph where they said that the Russians are in bad shape. And, you know, but that's, you know, they try to caress you and then bang, they slap you and then again caress you and bang again, they slap you, but they go in an upward uh, movement. So they caress you a little bit, they get you ready, tenderize you, and then bang, they get you, and then go next and again caress you, bang, smack you again with the information I'm talking, right? I don't have to say that, but it's, uh, some people who never know, you know? The invaders are continuing their assault south of Lishansk and will probably capture, this is you know, slowly the first step, probably capture the city in the coming days, but it's unlikely that they will swiftly take control of the Severodonetsk Lishansk area. Not swiftly, but in uh, three hours. Meanwhile, the invaders are uh, continuing their offensive operation against the town of Slovyansk, but have made little progress. The Russian invasion forces have stepped up their efforts to cut the Ukrainian communication lines on the T-1302 uh, Bakhmut-Lishansk highway in order to support their operations towards Lishansk. So they are very active, the little Russians over here. Not the little Russians, because they're uh, Malo Russians. Ma Malenki, small. Ma no, Malo Russians were uh, the way the Russians were calling the Ukrainians or the Ukrainians. Not like that a bit, like the small Russians, like little Russians, you know, uh, derogatory terms. So, uh, all right, so uh, there you go. The Russians have concentrated on defensive operations along the southern axis and may have made slightly progress, slight progress within Mykolaiv Oblast. So they are concentrated on defensive, but may have slightly progress. So you see how they give you? They are defensive, but they make progress. How do you make progress if you're defensive? You see, it's uh, one caress, one slap, let's move higher. One bigger caress, one bigger slap. Meanwhile, the authorities of the, of the Russian Federation continue to, to take measures to promote the economic integration of the occupied territory, the ISW said. That means if they are upping their activities in integrating that, that means it's a done deal. It's not like fires are shot still there. That means that it's under military control, the area. That's the translation. Because you don't start with uh, changing the towers on the frequencies of your, uh, as they uh, reported in an article, uh, to, to access the Russian um, uh, broadcast and so on from Moscow or wherever they come from, under the, you know, it's not even liberated, let's call it this way. It's definitely under their control, those areas, and there we start with the infrastructure, you know, changing the leadership, if it's not changed already, you know, uh, changing the curriculum of the schools, newspaper, propaganda thing, it has to be under your control. That's how you have a state. I mean, you have to have the uh, political system in your hand. You have to have the military and the intel intelligence uh, area. And then you have to have propaganda, which is newspapers and uh, entertainment, mass entertainment uh, and uh, schools. If you have those things, you're done. You're good. You're good. Why? Because the business, you can put business uh, on the defensive in just like this. You send the guys with, uh, <clears throat> dare to say, it, and they will uh, talk to them a little bit and they will understand. That happened everywhere and could happen everywhere including this country, including, unfortunately, always a gun is stronger than a, a person without a gun, if they face like this. And the person without a gun will employ people with guns. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.